This light bulb is actually it's, it's floating in free air. How, how does it do that? It is actually. I mean, I can I can run my hand around underneath it and above, and it's not touching anything. I can actually move it out and show that the light is getting powered by being inside the system. So it's wireless power, just like people have for uh, you know, like a toothbrush charger uh, on a much larger scale. So that's the first part: is that it's getting all of its power through the air, through the through the base that's holding it up. And then, secondly, it's using electromagnetic magnetic levitation to keep it in the same spot. So continuously through time its position is being measured and if it's too high up an electromagnet pushes it back in the center and if it's too low it gets pulled back up. So it's a combination of these two independent effects but one kind of works off of the other uh, to show that it's truly wireless. What about the energy efficiency in this uh, thing? Uh, it's pretty low but uh, it's much higher than it would be if you try to do it in a normal way just by having some coils. You use uh, the properties of resonance to make it about a thousand times as efficient as it would be otherwise. Uh, and one of the key points of this project is uh, the levitation and the wireless power functioning at the same time still take less power than an incandescent bulb would. So that's part of the, the large uh, aspects of the project is putting those two effects together and still showing that uh, how inefficient are we usually being when normally just a light bulb that you screw in, it's not being levitated and it's not powered wirelessly, still takes more energy than this whole system. But is, is, is this really a light bulb or is it just a model? Or, or? Uh, it's really a light bulb, but it's not really a light bulb that you can buy. It's really a light bulb that I made from scratch. But so can, can I can I, can I I take it out? Yeah, although if, if you take it out, just pull it down first. Because, yeah, that's, oh, oh. that's why. Because it's oh, very, yeah, very yeah. strong. Uh, but you can it's take it out. It's a very, now. very, very strong magnet. Yeah. So, so if I... So I you, to, it's good with two hands. Maybe, maybe it's you, better that you, you do it. Yeah, bring it a little up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, it's, I it, hope it's I, hard I, with one hand because because of the camera. Yeah, I'm um, terribly afraid to destroy it. But it's robust. It's, it's, you kind of have to hold it in a, within about a quarter of an inch or like a centimeter range, hmm. and then and then it will find uh, it will find the right spot. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's a it's a sensitive system, and also the the fact is this table is is very shaky. So any kind of sideways vibration gets coupled into the system, and since there's no friction in the system because it's floating, uh, anything that sits there will sit there forever. Um, so it takes, you know, if I spin it, I can spin it, and it will, it will, it will spin, you know, back and forth. It's kind of like a spring, and it will spin back and forth for hours before it settles down because there's no friction. And so people actually use magnetic levitation in mechanical engineering uh, for magnetic bearings, where they can float uh, rods in space and have less friction than any kind of hydrostatic bearing uh, that they would have otherwise. And that's one of the reasons that maglev trains exist. They're so <laughs> they're so efficient once they're set up. Okay, thank you. All right, my pleasure.